Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Today we're going to be showing you how we made our chandelier that we have hanging in our office. So we're going to start off by cutting these down to length. Use some old beams I grabbed from my parents' house out of an old wood pile. You can find something similar at probably construction sites or if you really want to, you could go pay for one. Uh, we like to do stuff for cheap, so I grabbed what I could and uh, we're going to cut them down for the right length. Since I didn't want one end to look old and rustic and the other end to look new and freshly cut, I ended up cutting off both ends of each beam, making the final length of each beam about 42 inches. I used my table saws and my miter sled to do all the cutting of the beams, but if you don't have a miter sled, you could also use a chop saw and just rotate the beams around like I did on the table saw, making cuts about halfway through on each side. Next I stepped over to my drill press and using a large Forstner bit about an inch and a half in diameter, drilled several holes down the center of each beam about an inch and a half deep. The original idea was for this to help reduce the weight of each beam as well as provide a channel for me to run my electric wires through so they wouldn't be visible from the ground. However, the channel really wasn't deep enough or wide enough to really reduce the weight of the beam by any substantial amount. If you don't have a drill press, you could use a drill with just a regular Forstner bit in it. Just don't expect your holes to all be the exact same depth or really nice and symmetrical. But that's not too much of a big deal since you're gonna straighten everything out with a chisel in the next step. Next, I set the beams up on my work table and used the one inch chisel and my rubber mallet to flatten out the sides of each channel so that they'd be nice and smooth. I then took my orbital sander with some 120 grit sandpaper and just did a light pass over both beams to basically get rid of all the dirt and dust that had been gathered onto the beams as they sat in the garage. Next came the fun part. I knew I wanted to do a different kind of finish on these beams since they were gonna be a big focal point in our new front living room. So I decided I was gonna try some torched finish on the beams to get a nice dark grain look without having to do all the extra steps that would go with using stain and a clear coat and all of that. It's turned out to be really fun. It's the first time I've ever done it, but it worked out really well. The torch we got at Walmart, actually, and it's just a simple butane torch that you would usually use for like copper welding or soldering. It's not very expensive, less than $20, and it really gave a good look to the wood once I did it. I would recommend using a test piece of wood for the first try if you've never done this before. So now that we've got the wood torched, I have to say I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to start doing the hardware, including the aluminum flat bar I purchased, which is going to be the metal banding going around here, and the pipe fittings that are going to go in between the two beams and turn the whole chandelier into a big square instead of just a nice straight piece. The length of each piece of aluminum strap was equal to about the circumference of each beam, minus about one inch. I'll explain why I minus the one inch later. The next thing you need to do is take and place them on the bottom side of your beam, so pick so which side you want it to be the top and the bottom, and center it on the bottom of the beam so you have equal length of strap sticking off each side, and I did mine about three inches from the edge of the beam. Using your drill, drill a hole about one inch in from the edge on each side of the strap into the beam. This is your hole that you're going to use to attach it to the beam with either rivets or screws. I went with rivets because I didn't want to have the screws sticking out on the bottom and have the look kind of ruined, but you could use screws if you wanted to. I used one and a half inch rivets and riveted two rivets through the aluminum bar into the wood and made sure that they were nice and flush with a tap of a hammer after I attached them. With some trial and error, I learned that the best technique was to then clamp each side of the strap to the beam before bending it down so that it didn't pull the rivets out that you just put in. Using a hammer, you can hammer or shape it around the edge of the beam and then flip the bar over and clamp both sides that are still sticking past the end of the beam to the beam so that you can, again, fold it around to the top. The aluminum was soft enough to bend with your hand, but you get better results if you use a hammer or mallet. After all the straps are on with your drill, go back 
and drill a hole about one inch to one and a half inch deep inside that one inch gap between the two ends of each aluminum bar. That's where your eye lag bolt is gonna go for mounting the chains later. Start it with your hands and then as it gets tighter, you can go ahead and use a screwdriver or something similar to get it to screw all the way down into the wood. Now that the banding and the eye bolts are all put in place, I went ahead and moved on to the hardware that's gonna go in between the two beams to separate them. I started out by cutting my pipes to length, which was 18 inches, and then started measuring the beams for exact center on the side of each beam so I could put my pipe fittings on the side of each beam. I simply just set the footings against the metal band that we just put on, marked where the holes were gonna be, pre-drilled the holes with my drill, and then ran the screws back through the holes in the fitting into the beam to secure them. Since I'm a little OCD, I made sure that all the Allen set screws on the footings were facing towards the top of the beam and couldn't be seen from the ground. Once you have all the pipe fittings secured to the beam, you can go ahead and put your pipe in between them and secure them in place with your Allen wrench. Next, you want to cut your chain's length. For our project, I wanted the beam to hang about a foot below the ceiling, which meant that I needed it four lengths of chain, each about 20 inches long. I measured out the length of chain I needed, and then you used the Dremel tool with a cutoff head on it to cut the chain. You could also easily use a hacksaw or a reciprocating saw. Once all your chains are cut to length, put the quick links on one end of each chain and then attach them to the eye bolts that we screwed in on the beams earlier and just test fit them to see how low the chandelier is going to hang. To make the shroud, start by cutting a 5 inch by 5 inch square out of plywood. Next we'll make the edge border. I used some scrap pieces of 1x4 that I had laying around the shop from a previous project. You'll need to cut two pieces to a five inch length, and then cut two pieces to five inches plus whatever the thickness is of your other two pieces combined. For example, mine were about a quarter inch thick. So my two second pieces were both five and one half inches long. Next, you'll wanna sand all your pieces to make sure they're nice and smooth. After you've gotten everything sanded, Go ahead and glue all of your edges to the plywood, securing them with 18 gauge brad nails. Give everything a light sanding once more to make sure everything is flush around the corners, and then go over to the drill press. I used a half inch Forstner bit to drill the hole in the center and the hole that's just slightly off center. The one in the center is gonna be for your eye bolt, and the one off center is gonna be for the wires to pass through. I then used my drill with my number eight countersink bit and drilled one hole in each corner for the drywall screws to pass through. And finally, I did a light pass with the torch to give it a similar look to the rest of the chandelier. All right, so now that we've got the chandelier base piece made, we're gonna start wiring up all the light sockets. We got pretty much all the materials for the light sockets and wiring off of Amazon. We'll put links in our description or on the blog. Putting the light sockets together was a steep learning curve, since I'd never really done it before, at least not with this kind of wiring. The hemp covering on the wire really made it difficult to get it all the way through all of the pieces so that you had hemp wiring sticking into the socket area. I did eventually get the first socket together though, it only took me about 10 to 12 minutes. Needless to say, at that point I was feeling like it was going to be a very, very long night. As I finished each socket, I would take and run the wire around the beam and just get an estimate of how low I wanted it to hang from under the beam and then make my cut and start on the next socket. It was after about three or four of these sockets in about an hour that I did kind of have an idea. So a handy little tip I'm finding out, instead of trying to run all the hemp cordage through 
everything all the way into the socket. It's much easier than putting it together. If you cut off about two inches of the hemp stuff and just run the wires through this because that little tiny hole doesn't really fit that cordage very easily. As it went along, I found out it's even easier if you wrap the loose end of the hemp with some electrical tape before you try and run it through all of the components. So with that little discovery, my time for making each socket went from about 10 to 15 minutes down to about two minutes. About another 30 minutes later, I had all of my 12 sockets completed and all of the wire wrapped around the beams. So after about two hours, I finally got all of the sockets done and all the wire is loosely wrapped. I have to staple it in place yet. This is another area where I'd do things a little differently if I had to do this again. Instead of stapling everything in place first and then trying to do the wiring, I do a little wiring first and then staple everything into place. I figured that out about halfway through on this project. For this next step, it does help to have a basic understanding of electricity and how to do wiring. If you don't feel comfortable, get some help from somebody who has a little bit more experience. Each of my beams had six lights on it. I took and paired the two on each end together and then paired the two lights in the middle together. In the same way we stripped the wire earlier to get it prepared for the socket, strip about two inches of the hemp coating off and then strip the plastic coating off for about three quarters of an inch. For each group of lights, you'll want to connect the white wires together and the black wires together. I then used the black and white wires from some extra 14 gauge wire I had around the house to make long pigtails from one set of lights to the next set of lights so that they'd all be connected in series. I worked from one end of the beam to the other. When I got to the other end of the beam, I actually added an additional pigtail out of the grouping that would go to where the chain came down to the beam so I could run my wire through the chain and then connect it to the lights. Once you have all the wire connections done, carefully not putting any tension on the wire connections, take and secure all of your wire to your beam using staples. I use 12 millimeter staples with my staple gun, but you could also use electrically insulated staples that you can get at any hardware store. Once you have the wire secured at the top of the beam, pull the rest of the wire taut around the beam and then secure it once more before the strand goes down to the light where it will be hanging free. Okay, now that all the wiring is done and everything's put together, it was time to get the everything ready to hang the chandelier in our front room. With some pliers, you're going to want to remove two of the punch outs from your ceiling fan box. You're going to want to remove the one at the bottom, or top, I guess, of your ceiling fan box and one of the punch outs on the side. The one on the side is going to be for your wires to run through from the ceiling and the one at the top of the box is going to be for you to use to drill a hole into your support beam and run your lag eye bolt that will support the weight of the chandelier. Since we didn't have an existing box where we wanted to hang the chandelier, I had to install our own. Take the cover and trace the circle on your ceiling where you want the chandelier to hang from and then cut it out using a hole saw. Test fit your ceiling fan box to make sure it actually fits into the hole. I attached the ceiling fan box cover to the ceiling fan box so that when I was up in the attic installing the beam, I could pull the box up flush against the ceiling and know just how low my beam needed to hang so that the ceiling fan box would be flush with the ceiling. I then went up in the attic with my joist braces and my beam which I'd already measured for and cut and attached the joist hangers to the joists which were already installed in the ceiling and then secured my new support beam in the joist hangers. Before heading out of the attic, make sure you run your wiring down through your ceiling fan box so that you have access to it from inside the house. I should know that while you're doing all of this, make sure you have the circuit breaker in your box turned off so that you don't electrocute yourself. Once back inside, I used some screws to secure the ceiling fan box to the support which I had just installed in the attic. Once the ceiling fan box is secured, you can go ahead and take your drill along with a 5 16 bit and pre-drill a hole for your lag eye bolt that's going to support the weight of your chandelier. Make sure you get it deep enough so that it will support the full shaft of the lag eye bolt when you screw it in, otherwise it'll be very difficult. Now in this part it's hard to see, 
but I also had the wires running through the chains hanging from the shroud. In retrospect, I would have just had the wires coming through the shroud and left the chains off and attached those later. Now similar to earlier, using electrical tape and a wire nut, connect all the white wires together, then connect all the black wires together. I went ahead and attached my ground wire to the ground screw in the ceiling fan box just so that it was up and out of the way. Secure the shroud to the ceiling with the four drywall screws. Now run your large eye lag bolt through the washer and then into the center hole of the shroud, screwing it into the hole we drilled into the support beam earlier. Using your two medium sized quick links, attach all four lengths of chain to the lag eye bolt that you just screwed in, two to each quick link. Now take your loose wires hanging from the ceiling and run them through the chains that you just hung up, keeping in mind which corner they're going to need to go to on the beam as you run them. Now for the last big step. You're going to want some help because the chandelier is probably going to be pretty heavy when you try and hang it up. I had Maddie help support the weight from the bottom while I tried to hold most of the weight up at the top with one arm and use my other free hand to connect the quick links on the chains to the eye bolts on the chandelier. Once we got the first side done, we had to adjust the ladder a little bit and then put the other side up and get both those quick links on as well. Depending on how long you make your chains, this could be a little tricky. The shorter the chain, the harder it is to hang up. Now that the chandelier is being fully supported by the mount, we can go ahead and finish up the last bit of wiring. Take the loose ends of the wire going through the chain and connect them to the loose ends of the wire that we left earlier that run to the lights. Lastly, screw in all your light bulbs and get ready to test. Also, I should mention you probably shouldn't leave your tools like your pliers up on the chandelier like I did. Turn the breaker back on and go check it with a light switch. If everything works, do a little happy dance. <laughs> 